Hello and welcome to Get In The Mix. Welcome back to another one of these. People seem to quite like it, so do it again. Today we'll be making Let's uh, build up the elements and see how it all comes together. Okay, so in this project, I've got some things set up once again. I've got some bass sounds, I've got drums, some pads and little sounds like that, and some percussion. I already have the basics involved. Oh, there's also a vocal sample in there. We'll have a quick look on the kick. We have occasional little uh, double hit, as you can hear pushing the boundaries. So my first port of call here is probably gonna be the bass line. What I have here with the bass line is one, two, three, four, five different layers, and they are all operators of varying sorts. You've got like a, a short sub. We have a longer sub. We have a bass tone. We've also got a bass crunch layer, which is kind of like the other one, but it's got a little bit of crunch. And then there's this one. This is the, well, it's called bass delay because I had a delay on it, but that, forget the delay. Let me rename that. This is a kind of like a wider thing. I've made it wide using this, which is a audio rack that someone very kindly put together on YouTube, in fact. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description. It's actually pretty good. It just makes it nice and wide. We've got all these different bass tones and, you know, a bass line doesn't just have to be one sound that does, you know, just a pattern. You can have a, some different sounds and different tones interacting with each other and you get like a lot more interesting stuff happening down there. Uh, where I'm going to start is on the sub long. Uh, loop that, I reckon. Quite like that. I'm gonna get rid of this because we could probably do some sort of variation with one of the other bass sounds. So I'm gonna move now to our short sub, copy our notes here from our sub long layer and paste them into our sh sub short layer. Uh, and then I'm gonna press zero and it makes them, it mutes them. The MIDI from our sub long and uh, <laughs> sub long and uh, sort of work around that. You can actually in Ableton select two tracks and then you can actually alternate and see the MIDI from each one, but I find that kind of awkward to use sometimes for some reason. It could just be me, uh, but I just prefer to copy and paste the notes and mute them. But let's maybe use our sub short layer to fill in here. Maybe go up high. Ooh. Apologies if you're watching this on the phone because this is all very... Uh, sub frequencies at the moment. But now maybe we'll add in a... All right, so now let's move on to our bass tone layer. I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna copy and paste the thing. Again, if anyone from Ableton is watching, I know. So now this bass tone layer is going to interact a little bit with our sub layers, but also do something a bit different. So let's have a listen. So I can fill this gap here. Maybe hit on that as well. I will point out at this stage that I have a groove pool selected. So this is adding swing to all these notes here. So whilst they appear to be on the grid, they're actually, if I apply the swing layer with this button here, you can see it shifts them over, but you don't actually have to commit to that. You can just have that highlighted and it will apply it without actually shifting the MIDI information over. So I'm just like layering up this bass tone layer on some of the sub notes and then also filling in some gaps, not all of them. And it just sort of emphasizes that note a bit more. It adds like a, an attack to it. And now onto the bass crunch layer, which sounds like this. That's not it. So we have this crunch layer probably just coming on the last note of each bar. And that probably do for the bass crunch layer. And then bass, uh, no delay layer. And maybe, uh, maybe we can have this on the one hit here. Ooh. 
I'm pretty happy with that as a bass line. So we've got all these five elements here sort of all doing their own little thing. Uh, and having the swing on this bass tone layer, swinging your bass line can add like a lot of energy and also it just sounds really cool. If we just have a quick look at these operators. I'm not particularly adept at using operator. I mostly just bring it in and fiddle around with it, to be honest. I'll show you, if I bring in a fresh operator here and then we'll just see if we can make. So my, my system for coming up with bass sounds in operator is very much just like keep experimenting until it works. I'm not massively clued up on the ins and outs of how it works. But if I take this, let's bring the MIDI in from here. So by default, it sounds like this which is a pretty good sub sound to be fair, where it's just a pure sine wave. But if we bring down the decay here, we add some harmonics in here. Uh, and then we could do the same maybe here. And don't get me wrong, this is a very simple sound, but it's not a bad bass tone. Um, and this sort of method of just sort of like fiddling around with these first two um, harmonic columns. I don't know what you'd call these. But just fiddling around with them two and adding different oscillators and things. Uh, I find you can get some really cool bass sounds without knowing too much of the technical side of what you're doing. But anyway, back to this, we can start looking at some of the other elements. So whilst I do have this sort of bare bonesy drum thing going on. Now all these drum samples are from uh, the Sample Market Mini Pack, which is a really, really good pack. I would definitely recommend that. But yeah, the main the drums are very basic. We've got this shaky hat. Again, the swing is applied to all the drum layers. Um, so this is just a little but here on these hi-hats, we've got a few different samples. At the moment, we've got this one, which is the off. I've also got this closed hi-hat and this other closed hi-hat. So let's add some of them in, just to get things flowing a little bit more nicely in the, in the hat department. And they're a bit loud. Now remember to change the velocities of your of your drums, especially your hi hats. Off hat can stay the same, uh, but again, if you want to change it up, you're, you're free to do so. But yeah, all these little extra hi hats, changing the velocity on them does change the groove a lot. So it almost makes your ear hear it like a different hi hat. Now let's add uh, some percussiony sounds. We have this, this. I'm using the fake phaser preset for the Ableton delay in here, making it sound a little bit more. Uh... So let's get some of these fellas added in. It's all about stacking these sort of things up and creating a, a feast for the ears. Uh, so then I've got this other layer here. I mean, these could probably be the same layer. I just like adding drum racks. More perks. So this little sound here is swinging very nicely into our no delay bass. Pretty cool. I think these are. I think these are all percussions percussion sounds that come with Ableton. So that would do for our perks there. Sounds pretty random when you can't hear the rest of it. We've got some tambourines. I have a constant tambourine running throughout, I think. Let's do the velocity on these so we get a bit more of a, a movement with them. Duplicate. Little resonant wood knock. So yeah, I really like these little tinks. All right, so let's have these tambourines cut out a little bit. So we've got like constant tambourine and then tambourine occasionally. That'll do for the drum side of things. I do have here 
This is another loop from the Many Pack from Zamba Market. Uh, they've got a whole bunch of these uh, sort of perk, texture perk loops, which layer over very nicely and just create, they just add some extra texture basically to your drums. Let's minimize our drums and open up the synth stuff group where we've got a pad. Uh, this pad is the Chompers, Chompers split, split pad. pad. Uh, as you can see, I've got a very, pretty aggressive EQ going on here. It's operating as a filter. We've got this other thing, which is... Let's rename this pad too. This is Chomper Split Pad, actually, again. But there are some little tweaks. This one is set a little bit more open, uh, and the reverb decay I've turned down a bit, so it doesn't, doesn't linger for quite as long. Uh, I've just renamed this. This is uh, 20 Perk Rev 2, again, from the Ableton Packs. And I've used that widener audio effect rack that I mentioned earlier that I used on the bass. I've used that on a lot of stuff, actually, just to, to give some stereo width to stuff. And then we've got this, uh, what I've called Weird Sound. Don't know how you'd really describe that other than uh, weird. So it's all sounding a little bit empty for me. So I'm going to copy our MIDI from our bass layer, once again, our sub long, paste them into our pad here, uh, shift and up arrow to raise up by octaves at a time. And I'm gonna extend these bass notes basically for two bars. Giving us a nice chord of our bass notes. Now, if you remember, we had that EQ8 very aggressive filter going on here. So inside this clip, I'm gonna go into our envelope thing up here, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, automation to it. So let's... Bit of this. So that sounds cool. What also will sound cool is, if I press B, and take our pencil here. Let's just draw in these kind of sharp jumps on the filter, but EQ. So that sounds cool. So you can see here that is controlling our eighth point. Oh, so it doesn't actually move it, but you can see here on the frequency knob. It jumps up and that's that automation that's happening here inside the clip. Now I think this could sound really cool with a delay on it. That's cool. Yeah, so by having those like sharp jumps in opening up frequency thing and then it cutting off again, that works really nice with delay because obviously the delay just echoes that change in it really well. Now let's get to our pad two layer. Let's just copy these notes. Maybe just make this with its shorter reverb. Just pop in. Oh, not there. That sounds pretty cool. And then let's do a similar thing and copy down to our next synth layer. Boom. So where do we want this to do its thing? Oh, that sounds pretty good there to be fair. It's a little bit shorter. Alright, so now that's there, I'm thinking our little, a little duh -duh from our pad could be maybe a bit later. Maybe let's move it along. Okay, so that sounds a bit better. I'm gonna try and shift these over, man. 
I'm going to shift these over manually a bit. So it's almost like they've got a bit of swing to them. There we go. Same on these ones. All right, so that sounds pretty cool. So yeah, what I've, what I've done is I've just held command or control and I've just manually shifted them over a bit just so they're sort of in line with the swing of the track and it sounds much, much groovier. All right, let's add the weird sound. I think I know what I want that to do. Nothing too much because it's pretty... It's pretty weird to have it on a little... Maybe that's too much. Maybe like this. That'll do for the weird noise. So all of our synth stuff together sounds like this. You got a bit of interaction going on between them. You could uh, push the boundaries of that a lot further and really like properly think about how things are bouncing off each other. Uh, I will note actually down here we've got these filler symbols. Uh, these are basically just adding this sort of background noise layer. I have really strong reverb on them and then I've just like compressed it quite a bit just to make that reverb a lot louder and squash it up. I took the attack off of these. They're basically just ride symbols so they don't tink. And these would just be like running out through the whole track, basically. So there we have our fundamental pieces for our track. What I'm going to do quickly is maybe lay them out in a short composition that could maybe be the you know center point of your track. Let's just drag everything out, actually. Let's cut out our clap. Uh, Command D, and you can split where you've clicked. Uh, maybe cut out our hats here. And probably this, yeah, all the hats. Let's get rid of them. Get rid of these extra hi hats in here. So we've just got the off hat. Let's get rid of our kick. Let's get rid of this pad on this breakdown bit. So that sounds pretty cool. That's the beauty of having um, all this synthy stuff going on. Is maybe you're not massively into the sort of like the drifty pad kind of minimal sound, you know, because some tunes will have it going out throughout like the entire tune. But if you have it in there, it gives you the opportunity to then have it cut out, which sounds really cool. So like in this little breakdown here, you've got the pads and the other synth stuff, and then some of the drums cut out. And then the breakdown, the kick drops out, and then with the kick dropping out, that main long pad that's been running, perhaps you sort of had it filter in through up up until this point, and then kick drops out, that drops out. And it kind of thins out a bit. And then your kick whips back in. That sounds pretty cool. So that's pretty much it for me today. Let's have pieced together this little middle piece. This is just an example of how you can then sort of take that initial structure and, and break it down a bit with the, the various elements. But there you go. Hopefully you've learned at least a single thing from this. If you're looking to get Ableton 10, we sell it. Links are in the description. Uh, at the moment, if you get Ableton 10, you actually get a free upgrade to Live 11, which we also happen to do. Oh wait, the mic's over here. Link in the description. But yeah, if you enjoy the video, drop us a like. If you have any questions, drop a comment. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you really enjoyed yourself, subscribe. Thanks.